Townsend Fold level crossing is one of four level crossings on the East Lancashire Railway near Manchester. Townsend Fold is manually operated but mechanically locked off the lever frame. The crossing itself has two level crossing gates, the left hand one of which used to open across to the goods shed. The lever frame is a 10 lever frame, though not all the levers are in use. Well, the type of the gates they got here in Townsend Fold are just manual push gates fitted with black locks. The locks on the gate post are connected via levers, cranks, this lever here, which I cannot replace into the frame at the moment until both gates are correctly across the road and the bolts correctly engaged and, and locked. And that enables then this lever to go fully normal. Until this lever is fully normal, you can't make the stop signals across the crossing. So if he's got the gates bolted across the roadway and this lever is put into the frame, what that does is then it locks the bolt the gate bolts outside, <coughs> which in turn you've got your gates then locked across the roadway. Well, the distance actually don't work at all, but again, the distance won't be released until the stop levers are reversed. Uh, this is the flexible coupling on the original gate wheel drive here at uh, Townsend Ford. That drive goes off down there to the original gate wheel drive. That goes up there to the wheel itself. And that acts as a shock and buffer zone and also if the gates get hit that takes some of the uh, pressure as well. So the gate drive there drives a kicking crank there which drives this bottom lock here so when the gates are across the other side locks that bolt in place there. And it's key style end. That fits into there when you turn it. Pull your lever, your lever comes up and locks the gate bolt in position. Ram's bottom level crossing is quite unique in heritage preservation in that its level crossing is interfaced with a set of traffic lights for road users. These are part-time red, yellow and green indications and we'll see some of that operation now in use. It's worth noting that the level crossing also has pedestrian wicket gates which are also interlocked to the frame. And we'll see those also in use. The wicket levers are brown. So that primes the traffic lights. Okay. The traffic lights with the crossing gates. Putting that normal in the frame releases the gate stops lever. So just give it a few seconds, just sort of make sure the electronics in the frame down there are kicked in. Now, so to replace this number two lever, the, the stop lever, is the normal position. That primes the road stops and it also drops the rail stops, which Freeze up the gates in the position there and now. As soon as I squeeze this cap channel, it start the lights going to red. So it should start the sequence off now. lever physically locks the, the gate mechanism downstairs. The rail stops 
sort of popped up again to capture the gates and swing it across the railway. Squat, squeeze the catch handle upstairs, that breaks the feed which then puts the traffic lights to, to danger, yeah. goes to the sequence. And then when you wind the gates, it breaks the, another contact in, contact in there. Box. So the traffic lights only come off to green when the, the gates have gone completely across the railway. Obviously the, the, uh, the stop lever's reversed by then. So they, they go, go to green again then, that's it. So that's the purpose of that. Right, so you got you got uh, this escapement motion. Well, it's not an escapement; it's a direct drive. Just direct you know, drive, it's yeah. Just, yeah. So the rack and pinion, yeah, off the gate wheel comes down. Rack and pinion actually drives the gates. Correct. Yeah. Uh, ah, yes, I say yes. So that attaches that, to electric lock. Yes. That's the that's controlled by number one lever. That's the one that physically bolts the. Ah. Yes. Just like the facing point. Just a facing point lock through the main yeah. rod. I mean, like all our gates on the London Midland were like that, you know, through this yeah. rail, all them, um, you know. Worked well over the last few years? Yeah. Uh, we've done a lot of work. A lot of work. Like, yeah. issues, issues with council road salt and stuff? No, not really. That's no, not I mean, we, to, we maintain the road stops every six weeks, you know, we, we, we close off half the road. And then uh, we, we just give them a good oiling and grease, and, and there's grease nipples and all the pins That's now, good. and all the joints and that. So, uh, as long as you sort of, they're intensively maintained, but up to now we've had no bother yeah. with them. They're a busy crossing as well, aren't they? Hell, you have. Various cranks. This large one here is the main gate drive, which, just, which pushes that rod that way and operates. Another crank underneath the timbers there. Basically, these two little gates the rotten stall side. At the same time, this is what we call the J crank there, and that's like an escapement crank which operates the road stops. When the gate stop the lever is put to the normal position, that swings this J crank round to that face is in direct line with the roller there. So when you wind the gates to go across the roadway, that roller contacts that face there, and nudges the road stop operating lever, that's operating rod, which is that. That rod there it goes across the roadway and shows the road stops up just as the gates are approaching the road stops. Now, when we want the stops, the road stops down, you pull the road stop lever to the reverse position, and that moves that rod there, and the J crank contacts the roller and also the shoulder contacts that bracket there that drags the road stops down at the same time the cranks also go to each rail stop which when the gates are coming across the railway you want the rail stops up in the air to capture the gates and the converse when they go in before they go across the road you want them dropped.
So Rothenthal West is on a skewed crossing as you can see. So the road is a little bit interesting. Um, you'll notice something slightly different than the norm. There's a very small lower light unit just fitted there. And the reason for that is it's a very windy day here. If you just look over there, there's a side road coming out straight into the crossing. So they had to have their own set of lights as well. So apart from the standard four, you've also got this extra set there looking out the side road as well. So we've got a pedestal in front of us that controls the barriers, the four gated barriers oh, here. Yeah. At uh, Rothenstall West, there's one there, there and there. For those that don't know, Z, Z barriers are on the down and Y barriers are on the up. So you've got near side and offside, so that over there is a ZO, so that's the downside offside, and this is a ZN, downside near side. Um, works off the pedestal, the next one tells how that works. The same, it's got low raise, crossing clear, you press crossing clear, and once it's clear you press lower or raise, then you put a stop on so it. So when you're going down, you, pre you press the down, uh, press the lower, um, you've got an emergency stop there to stop it should you need to. Yeah. Um, you've got all your indications there repeated as well. You've got battery charge, road signal, machine door and barriers failed. That's that's slightly that's different. That, yeah. That's good. The normal and track circuit release on the top? Yeah. Normal fold, actually, yeah, just, just in case you get a track failure. Yeah. Is that, that's a, an original barrier pedestal that's been modified by the railway to suit its needs? Yeah. There we are on the side road now, just looking at the set that's pointed directly across from the side road. As you can appreciate, drivers coming out the side road here will be a bit preoccupied looking left and right. Sighted left for them. So they'll be a bit preoccupied, creeping out very slowly, trying to get around the corner of this building. That's why we provide the extra indication for them as well. It's a lovely box again. Metal palisade fencing instead of the traditional wood. It looks quite uh, quite nicely done in the white, and it lasts a lot longer than the wood will as well. And as with most you know, standard barriers, 843 units, you have two sides to them. One side which is accessible uh, for emergency pumping. There's a pump handle in there that can be engaged to pump barriers should they fail up and down. And the other side has the contact boxes and the pump motor in for the S&T side. So we don't want the operations staff going in that side, touching things they shouldn't be touching. Um, one side, obviously if you open it up, it will trip out the alarms upstairs on the barrier pedestal that you saw before. So we know when one's not been put back right as well. Um, the other side, not alarms, so you don't need, uh, don't need access to that. Standard booms, detachable here. Um, there's also some colour vargle nut in there, which is a shear off pin. Um, on this side, this side, and we also have a micro switch detection on these. Traditionally, these used to have a wire that used to go up, and if the boom got knocked off, say a uh, lorry hit it or something, they had to shear the wire, but it wasn't guaranteed that that would always work. So now they have micro switch detection in here, and that's what this little fair is. Also, this cable brings all the lights up and everything, so that's part of that. The lights themselves come on around about 83 degrees. There is a little marker on the side, which is very handy to note. That's what this is for, on the side of all the packs. And obviously with most sequences of these crossings, the first thing that will happen is you will get the yellow lights. Um, it goes right up between three and seven seconds. And then the red road lights will come on uh, for another period of time after that. 
Then after that sequence is operated, the barriers will start to descend. And with it being a four barrier crossing, you get the entrances, barriers come down first, leaving the exits open so you can still escape the crossing should you already be on the crossing driving across. And then after, once the first pair have come down, the second pair will go down afterwards. Uh, standard operation, you'll see that next. One little interesting thing I'd like to show you here. You see this wire coming out here. You see what the wheel is in relationship to the level crossing. Obviously you can't get your wire that way easily enough. So that wire comes down and it goes around the return wheel. It's got back on itself so that it can get the crossing nicely without interfering with anything. It's a nice little idea. The layout down at the station is worked off a of small ground frame for now. The box isn't fully commissioned yet. There's still a bit of work to do to get the rodding running between the points and the signal box, but all the lead offs are in place ready. That will be the next job for the SNT. Let's pass the crossing clear first. Okay. Open the cars and load. Ah, press lower. It's not going to drop on me to use it. Uh, where is he? He's at? No, he's over there, isn't he? So that's the lights, the sequence of the lights and the old alarms. We've gone through the yellows now onto the reds. Then the entry barriers drop. And then finally, when they've dropped, the exit barriers drop. And once it's down, you can press cross and clear. You've got your indication. And you'll be able to clear your signals if you wanted. But we're going up as well. They go up together at the same time. Obviously those boom lights will go out about 83 degrees and the motors will stop once we're at the top. So these are some of the control systems that operate the level crossing. So without going into too much of the circuits obviously time for the warm and time for the yoga arms on the back there. Uh, stop relays, lower stick relays, crossing normal stick relay, yellow lap relay, uh, yellow blue timer relay, red lap relay, yellow timer repeat relay, comp JR and comp JPR are the contacts on the booms and doors if I remember rightly. And you have controls for the rays and obviously the failed indications and timers all for uh, the different sequences of the operations. You have the down indication relays, stick relays, the door proving relay, um, as I mentioned before when you open the doors that alarms upstairs as well. And then we have finally the lamp relays down there for each of the individual crossings. All standard 930 plug-in relays um, and there's a few other little additions there just added in. The standard cupboard, single cupboard, Nice job. We're surviving this wind, this storm, baking, whatever it is, is coming out over it. So we're surviving that. And just a sample of the control circuits here. So the typical level crossing circuit is your contacts out on the book units that I mentioned before. And you can see the made between 0 and 83 degrees. Uh, standard circuitry, symbols, motor relay, cutouts, etc. Raise relays that you can see. These are these like controls for Rotsall West level crossing. For the standard circuits, you have LED boom lights here, um, which are a lot easier than the old traditional ones we used to have to take the lamps out of. Uh, it's all standard circuits, standard controls, uh, to, and the layout for the location itself we've just seen. So that's just three of the four level crossings that the East Lancashire Railway has. The fourth one down towards Castleton, allowing access to and from the network rail infrastructure, which we'll go into in another time.